waters quite a bit um, for, for people like me who are like interested in this stuff. It's a um, hard thing to seriously uh, yeah. research. Yeah, it takes a a lot. And maybe one day, if this is ever like a, a really popular podcast, we can bring on like a, a researcher that can help us take care of that stuff. Would it be I don't sweet? know. We got sixty five um, stars now, so we're basically. Oh shit, we're at sixty five. No, you now? said well, you said we're at sixty. A little over yeah. sixty. A little 65 over sixty five star yeah, yeah. reviews. Yeah, that's, I mean, we're getting there. Good time now. For two episodes, though, two episodes. I'm proud of that. Serial, here we come. Um, two dope queens. We're coming for you. Get ready. <laughs> uh, and the last, just uh, the last astronaut was Edgar Mitchell from Apollo 14. He walked on the moon. Uh, has come out and said he believes there are actually alien structures on the far, far side of the moon. He is quoted in saying, uh, there are lights, they're watching us, they're right around the corner, and they are here. Uh, the moon is being used by aliens to observe us and all that stuff that we've already talked about. And the thing with the crazy UFO people, like, not necessarily like me, but other people who are into the field, they love, they fucking adore, and if you read any article, they adore pointing to these people and being like, well, they're as astronauts, and they're credible, so it must be true. And uh, that's kind of like a lot of the the base of, well, of people's I, beliefs here, which I can I, I can agree and understand. Absolutely. Oh no! Like if I was gonna point to anyone, and be like they know what they're talking about. Yeah. I would point to astronauts and be like, they're hyper intelligent. They have They've done things there. that we've never done. They like yeah. Of course, I'd point to them. But at the same time, this goes back to the the they're still human and they still yes. can make post, mistakes. And so post career like testimony has a lot less weight to me than like primary sources though. Absolutely. There's a bunch of ex-CIA people who've come out and been like, oh yeah, we're hiding aliens from you people. Like, that's actually happened too, but again, they're post- But, but, how, yeah, but we, how do we know, and like, this goes to, to yeah, we can't. human being, how do we know that they left their CIA job and years have passed and they're like, man, I need to pay the bills. And they <laughs> yeah, see people yeah. who are desperate for this, like, please tell us anything. And then you can be like, oh yeah, no, I'd love to, to get money from idiots. And then you literally just go to them and, and make up lies. And people do that. It's it's crazy to me that people assume. Like, I'm one of the... I truly believe in trusting people and being very trust, like trusting of others. But even I have to admit that at the core of most people, lying comes easily. And oh, yeah. so, especially if it involves money. And oh, so I feel 100%. like... And if a man desperate for money will do a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why people are killed in bank robberies and stuff. And like yeah. 7-Eleven, because they're like, look, I need this money and I can't have you get me arrested, so I'm going to shoot you. And and it's cold, but that's how it works. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not saying to, to you know, again, in, to counterpoint that and devil's advocate, don't throw everything out the window just because you think they're all desperate for money. Because I don't think Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were like, Looking for cash in their late. Oh, absolutely! You know, oh, absolutely! Twilight. I think yeah, it just makes that it whole idea. harder to get a real documentation of it. Yeah. yeah, and and yeah. I think this goes back to the whole idea of the show and the whole idea of paranormal anything. The studies of it is that if there's point zero zero one percent truth in it, then that changes reality. Yeah. Right? It's more of a study of and ourselves. So that's why right? people are so like, yeah, that's why people are so involved and people want to to they want to know no. Because if it is true, if even a fraction of it is true, then it's life-changing. But the problem is, is that because people are so invested in finding that small fraction, it allows people, hucksters and scammers, to come in and be like, yeah, 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 I totally saw that. Give me your money. I wrote a book. And that's, yeah. that's wrong. And there's but so many of those people out there. There's yeah. so many of those people who just want to cash in. Um, and why it makes researching the kind of the alien stuff. Uh, very, very, very difficult. And it makes it easier to laugh at people who have discovered something because then we can be like, yep. that's nothing. And I yeah, think, exactly. you know, it goes back to the beginning of the show when Alex was like, don't think we're making fun of people. It's just that there's legitimate ways to investigate yeah. things. Yep. And when you see it not happen, you're like, stop. Oh my God, stop. Let's get to the real stuff. Things that are fascinating. Like later on, when we got to the ringing bell. That's interesting stuff. Yeah. Yes, a, a hologram moon is BS, but a ringing bell moon? The thing, yeah, the, How do they know? The like, thing that's stopping me from believing this shit isn't my, like, higher sense of morality. It's not like I'm just like, no, hippies are crazy. That can't be right. Like, it's just like, give me something convincing that I can read about and look into and is documented, and I will, I will go there. I'm open to being convinced of fucking anything. Absolutely. Yeah, me too. And, like... That goes to the whole, like, my, my, my personal belief. Like, I want to believe, and I'm happy to believe if there's enough evidence to convince me that there's something there. But there's so much disinformation and lies and all kinds of stuff out there that it makes it very hard 
to find something substantial. But when something like Project Black Book gets revealed like a month or two ago by the government, that's where I look and go, okay, there might be something. There's something to it can, at like, the very least. Explore. Yeah, exactly. So the last theory we're, we're going to get to, and this is the funniest one, and get ready to, to just question everything. Okay. The moon wasn't built by aliens. It's not a hologram. What the moon actually is, is a human-built object by humans who were sent back in time to create this gigantic moon to facilitate life on Earth. Time is a flat circle, man, what? and we have to go back, and the time is coming Wait, up. What? Where we, we have to go back in time and send people back in time to build the moon so that evolution can happen and life can take place here on So this Earth. is like one what? of those, like, There's, it was always here, is, but we also had to create it. Terminator 2. Yes. It's like situations. Yes. Exactly. And there's a wonderful website that... Uh, how that, would, that how would we create it? Well, we would send back all of our best engineers, like, back into our the early... Our best engineers? We've been studying to, it for... To we've build? been studying it for thousands of years. We know what's on it. We know what we must build. If you... Listen. Wait, wait, no, no, I'm talking about time. Yeah. Time-wise, that would be a generational shift. You'd have to send back engineers who then their kids would keep building the moon. The moon is huge. Depends on how far how ahead would we in the future. How build the moon? Depends on how far ahead in the future right. we, we decide to build it. Non, non Maybe sense. we can 3D print well, it. Well, listen, you're, you're wrong. You're wrong, Jesse. And I'm going to tell you why. And, and, and enjoy, for those who are curious about this insanity, it's called whobuiltthemoon.com. Good question. It's, it's, a great, it's a great question. He, he posits this particular gentleman and, and those he talks about that the moon was not alien, it was not a hologram, it is human built. And they ask the question, well, how do we know? How do we know it is human built? It's all in the numbers, man. It's mathematically there. We humans put hidden messages throughout the moon's like map and how far it is away from the earth to tell us subtly that humans built the moon so that humans in the future figure it out Realize we have to send back people to build the moon and do so. What are these numbers, man? You might be asking yourself, how is that possible, This is possible, like a Nicolas right? Cage movie, you know. Well, there are messages in the moon, my dude. The moon is a sculpture of sorts, my but it is soul. also a very... Soul. <laughs> oh, you're... Jesse, I'm about to blow your fucking mind. The first message that is, in, is put into this moon is the eclipse, the eclipses. Solar eclipses happen when the shadow of the moon covers the surface of the sun. Total solar eclipses are very impressive, and for one important reason. When seen from the Earth, the disk of the moon is exactly the same size of that of the sun. This isn't the case, uh, this isn't the case, but it is a line of sight effect. In reality, the sun is obviously much more massive than the moon, but it's very much further away. Solar eclipses are a near miracle, and they don't happen anywhere else in the solar system. The only reason they can occur is because of two factors. The moon is one four hundredth part of the size of the sun, and the moon is capable of standing at a position one four hundredth part of the distance between the Earth and the sun. How unlikely is that? If any message incorporated into the moon was specifically designed to say, look at me more closely, it is the solar eclipses. It is mathematically near impossible that it would happen and be so perfectly sized and perfectly distanced between the Earth and the sun that humans did it. And it is our message. Is, it ac is that accurate math? Uh, I believe that is actually accurate math. That solar it, eclipses and all that stuff is that is super duper 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 rare, and it requires a perfect distancing um, of of the moon from the sun. It's rare for our solar system, right? But it's not but rare we don't for know our anything galaxy. About, out it's there. not we rare for our universe. It's not. It could be. This is. This goes back to the beginning of this nonsense of like, don't you see how important we are? And it's. It, it, we must have done this because we're so damn smart that. The science and math of the universe itself couldn't have done this. It's, it's, like, that I gotta say, nonsense. I gotta say that fact taken out of any sort of context is pretty good. Who built the moon.com? <laughs> but put in context of, you know, the universe. Well, well I don't know. You know, maybe I don't know. Fun. The exact right is it is, first of all, is the moon exactly the same size as the sun during an eclipse? Well, it perfectly it covers well, But I mean, it, yeah. anything bigger would cover it. But that's uh, right. But it, it's like a perfect silhouette. It's like it's a perfectly covers the moon, not any bigger that, or any smaller. It is that's, exactly where it needs that's, to be. I would but, say that's significant. That's right, significant. But, but I go go back to what we said at the beginning. Just because it happens to us 
doesn't mean that it can't happen. I'm elsewhere. just saying, like, I don't like, know what. I'm improbable. just saying, I don't know what principle of physics would would govern that phenomena. Is all I'm saying. That's pretty like. Also, also, there. I mean, this is the nonsense of. Yes, it can, an eclipse can totally cover the sun, but only in certain areas at certain times. There are partial right. eclipses. There, like total eclipses, aren't a thing that happens everywhere, everywhere all the time. And then eclipses only happen so often. So right. to say that we mathematically, if if it was, if that was the case, mathematically where he lives, yeah, like this, it's <laughs> nonsense. Well, we're probably if, not if, looking if it, at all of the messages yet, right? So maybe nonsense. there's more, the, but there. There but is a second plus, message. Plus, there, I mean, like, to say that, don't you understand, it's because it perfectly covers the sun. That's not true. There are partial eclipses, and there are eclipses, and then total eclipses. And total eclipses, very, they only happen in a very specific line of the thing. Like, it's nonsense. Right. I, I hate bullshit math. I hate it. <laughs> and it is bullshit math because, like you said, total eclipses don't happen everywhere on Earth. But if there's it's a temple, not, it's not possible. A temple to the moon. That is the <laughs> proper reading point. Maybe there's a point on Earth if we follow the ley lines. Are you saying we're? Were you saying we're gonna Indiana Jones this thing and stick a staff to the I ground? Was, that's what I was thinking shoot, in exactly. my mind. Yeah, let's do it. If that happens, I'm. Oh, it's if actually there is, the if there's from a the staff in the '90s, not Indiana Jones. <laughs> I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. Oh God. All right. Well, here's the second message for you boys. The second message we send ourselves with the moon is something called the scissoring of Ooh. the moon. Okay. Yo, Ooh, hell yeah, yeah, girl. Aliens. Hell yeah, girl. Is it not peculiar the fact that when viewed from Earth, the moon and the sun perform an elegant and most unlikely dance? At times when the sun rises at dawn as far north as it can, the moon sets as far south as it is possible. Similarly, when the sun rises at its extreme southern position, the moon sets at its most northern. The same is true of sunset and moonrise. Hardly anyone even realizes that this takes place, let alone understands just how incredible it is. There is no mathematical rule or law of physics that says this should happen. It is simply a consequence of the moon's orbit positioning, and yet as, ra as a random chance event, it seems virtually miraculous. This, well, time out. What? What? This? Can you repeat? Like, this, sum that up for this me? This seems what? a lot more directly a result of just, like, where the Earth is. Like... That is correct. <laughs> there is oh. not really. Yeah. yeah I read this, this second one and I was just like, I'm not sure if he is just like desperate for a second point or he truly. Like, I feel like this was, I have a really good first point and the second point is not so good. <laughs> the second point is, is pretty hot garbage. Um, the, the, to sum it up for you, Jesse, he's saying that when the sun rises at its most northern, the moon sets at its most southern, and vice versa. And it's an it's like a perfect dance of the moon and the sun. That is much more relative than the total eclipse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Again, that's it's a all these are sort of relative informational things that if you only look at. Like th this is this is the like saying is rare enough well, that you're be... like, huh? At least for a second. But this is like, the sun right. sets at a different time. Like, if you're a hundred miles away. And this this goes to the idea of like, well, there can't be a thing called global warming if it's snowing in Boston right now. Like that's not right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Everything's relative. And thank no, it's God. not. Thank God. All right. <laughs> uh, so the other things, there's a couple other things in here. Um, he says things like, as far as you know, ratios and the size of the moon and the Earth is all it's all in the numbers, man. Um, for instance, the sun is 400 times bigger than that of the moon, and the moon stands at one four hundredth part of the distance between the Earth and the sun. The Earth is 3.66 times bigger than the moon, and the and the Earth year, thanks to the presence of the moon, takes 366 days. It really does, but these are star days and not solar days. Uh, it takes 27.322 days for the moon to fully orbit the Earth. That means that 366 orbits of the moon around the Earth take an absolutely even 10,000 days. John Kennedy it's and Abraham Lincoln, perfect. if you look at their birthdays... Uh, <laughs> well, that's exactly it. And we're going to get to the, the, the theory, the, the thing that we are talking about a little bit ago, but there's still can a little I be, Can more. I be really harsh? Like, my apologies. I, mean, I, I, I know I am most of the time, but can I be like, just... For anyone listening right now, I don't mean this to be offensive. This is like something you truly... If you look at this information and you truly believe this, God bless you. But... You're having more fun in life than I am. When I hear this information, what I hear is someone dumping facts and figures, hoping someone who has only a base level understanding of math buys into it. Like, once you start to actually work out this stuff, 
It's like this is nonsense. It might be, but because you just throw out numbers and be like, who has the basic understanding of math? I'm, I, it's very true. <laughs> I feel like this is one of those things that's like, I'm trying to convince people who are low information that this is real. So I'm going to dump a lot of facts and figures and numbers that don't necessarily equate to anything. But because I said it, I sound like I know. That's what, what Russia did. And I feel like well. Yeah. There's, there's more to it, man. This is the last bit of numbers I'm going to give you because, man, I'm not done blowing your oh, mind sick. yet. The number, the number 27.322, which we just observed is the number of days it takes the moon to orbit the Earth, is highly significant, both singly and it's, it's multiplies in the Earth-Moon-Sun relationship. For example, the Sun is exactly 109.288 times the size of Earth, which is 4 times 27.322. Even modern measuring systems were taken into account because the circumference of the moon in, in kilometers is 10,928.8 kilometers, which is 400 times, you guessed it, 27.322. And there is that 400 again, which you may recall the is the number of times yeah. bigger the sun is than the moon. And as staggering as it may seem, the circumference of the moon is 27.322% that of the circumference of the Earth. It all boils down to a tripartite relationship between three numbers, their subdivisions, and multiples. Okay, okay. Boom! Okay, no. You can't argue no, 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 no. <laughs> this is the most perfect example of cherry-picking facts. Right? Cherry this goes back to the idea of talking about when we were like, oh, well, we're very special because we have a moon, and we're like the perfect distance from the sun for life. All that stuff, this is taking that idea and saying... Oh, okay, well, because all that's so perfect, we mankind must have done it. This is like the thing where you're like, yo, did you know that in New York City, whenever ice cream sales are up, there's more murder? <laughs> right, yeah. It well, it's, it's a true fact, what I'm saying, right? But you're leaving right, out the fact... There's no correlation. You're leaving out the fact that heat causes, like, like aggression? Right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like... During the summertime, there's more murders than in the winter because people are out later, people are worked up because... Yeah, there's many, many factors, yeah. and just to cherry-pick a few and then be like, here's the and theory, is not Fit them into the theory. Yeah, right. it's, it's insane. This guy also fully believes that science is just like religion. We blindly believe it because we've been brought up in such a way that we have Except to, that religion right? doesn't here's have um, here's receipts. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. There you go. Exactly. exactly. That's what exactly. I'm saying. Like, exactly. But all of this boils down to... What we were talking about earlier, and that I, I forgot to give a name to it, but I should have. Uh, the idea that it's called the anthropic principle. The anthropic principle is what states that the universe is the way it is, is because if it were any other way, we wouldn't be here. It's that idea that it, if we weren't the ones that were brought to, to life and sentience, another planet would have. Because that's just how it works. The galaxy or the universe is so vast and so infinite that it was bound to happen mathematically. That's the anthropic principle. Well, can't, I mean... That, that, that's just how it is. I'm more inclined to listen to someone tell me that the universe, the reason why mathematically all this checks out is because there was like, it, there's a grand design. Like that, I, I'm more, I'm more willing to listen to that mm -hmm. than being like, well, humanity clearly went back and did all this work and we're the ones who did it. It kind of just I, sounds I, like somebody being like, the cup is on the table because I put it there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not. Right. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't actually. It's only deep if you don't think about it too much. Right. It doesn't yeah. explain anything, right? There's, no. there, there's Correct. And I think there are many theories, many of them crazy, many of them awesome when it comes to paranormal and, and the study of just, like, stuff out there in, in the, the sci-fi universe. But I think that this aspect of it, of cherry-picking science, is one of the reasons why it's not taken seriously. Because anyone yeah, with a scientific background or a mathematic background looks at this information as like, this is bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and it's, it's even us who are not, we're not scientists by any stretch of the imagination. It was not hard. It was a little time consuming, but it was not hard to like dig into scientific facts and be like, all right, well, this is all super easily disproven. You can disprove it with Google because alone. There's, yeah. Yeah, you really could. I mean, if you really could, if you really want to just be like, find some surface level facts that would be like, well, this is insane. Uh, it's really easy to do that because as much as I'd love to believe the the moon is a generational spaceship sent here by the Plejarans uh, or Pleiadians, you can say it either one. One of them's right, one of them's wrong, depending who you talk to. <laughs> it's not. It's not the. It's just not. It's just not the truth. Yeah, that just isn't it. And I, I 
God, I am as open to believing it is it is something as as crazy as aliens exist as any 